out here today on my woodlot, and lately I've been taking a look at some of the stands I've delineated and determining management plans for those stands so I can ensure they stay healthy and productive into the future. Right now I'm out here in the pole-sized hardwood stand that I classified in the stand typing video as a POTH2ASF. As with last time, the first step in the management of the stand is going to be to determine the stand condition, which is to say the species composition, the health, growth, and likely trajectory of this stand. It's mostly hardwood with roughly 10 to 20 percent of softwood, and of the hardwood, it's roughly 50-50 aspen and then tolerant hardwood, which is to say sugar maple, red maple, and ash. But in terms of the state and condition of the stand, it is very tall and very dense. Most trees have a very small crown, and while they might go 40 to 50 feet up, they're at most 6 inches in diameter. But the trees are, for the most part, fairly healthy. They don't seem to be at imminent risk of mortality, and there's no signs of rot or decay. It's just a tall, spindly stand. And that can make management fairly difficult, because as a tree loses its crown, it also loses its foliar area and ability to photosynthesize, which negatively affects growth. And because the stand has grown up so dense and close together, they kind of depend on each other in order to stay up. As soon as you start coming in and opening up the stand, you start to lose some of that stability and you risk blowdown. Now, some species are more at risk of this sort of blowdown than others, but high on the list of species vulnerable to this sort of thing are aspen and fir, of which we have quite a bit. So what about the quality of the trees? Well, even though the crowns are smaller, the quality of the aspen and the fir are fairly nice. They're free of defects, nice and straight, and growing well. For the tolerant hardwood, however, the quality is not too great. Most of the maples are multi-stemmed or extremely crooked, and while the ash is good quality, it's also ash which means it's in constant threat of the emerald ash borer, which is in this area. So I don't really want to invest too much time growing it, but in the interim, it can work as a pretty decent firewood. Now, while that roughly defines the stand condition, before I actually start making any management objectives and start looking at my treatment options, I want to kind of verify what I'm seeing, take a look at the actual growth of the trees and whether it matches up to my perception. To do that, I'm going to be using an increment borer. I've used this before, but essentially what it is is it's an auger that can drill into the tree and take a core sample so I can actually count the rings and look at the growth rate without cutting down the tree. The reason why it's important to actually use this and get real data is because while my intuition is telling me that this stand is in need of a thinning, it's possible that the crop trees that I'd be looking to leave aren't actually growing and their crowns are too far receded to actually respond to a thinning. If that's the case, then all I'd really be doing by opening up the stand is increasing the risk of blowdown and increasing the rate of mortality without having any real benefit at all. So let's take a look at what the trees are actually doing. So basically just at breast height, I'm going to punch in and start turning and try to hit the center of the stem, which I can't always do, but we'll see how, how it works. I think we got it, there we go. That's probably center, so I untwist a little bit, push that in. Now fur can be hard because it always breaks apart at the rings, but uh, from what I can tell, I'm actually fairly impressed. Even though that fur has a very small crown, it's still growing at a reasonable rate. The width of the rings has definitely slowed down, but of course, as the tree grows larger in diameter, smaller increments, mean that it's actually growing equivalent, if not more, volume. And if I take a look at some aerial drone footage inspecting the tops of the trees, you can see that, yeah, they're actually healthy and still growing a fair amount. Now we'll do similarly with a representatively sized aspen. Okay. Now the rings on aspen can be very hard to see, so hopefully that shows up well. But it's still growing very quickly, it's barely slowed down at all. In fact, in terms of volume, it's probably sped up. 
So those results for both the fir and the aspen were actually better than I expected. I had anticipated the growth slowing down much more and the ability for these trees to respond to a thinning to be much more limited. And while certainly it's not ideal to thin them at this time, it would have been better to thin them at an earlier stage, they still can withstand a thinning, especially if the removal is fairly light. So now that we've actually ascertained the stand condition, we know the health of the trees, and we roughly know the growth rate, now let's actually make a management plan and determine what we want to do. Well, by far the two most valuable species in this stand are going to be the fir and the aspen. The fir is valuable as a saw log for structural lumber. And while the aspen is fairly low value in terms of unit per volume, uh, it is sold as pulp wood for oriented strand board, and it grows so fast that it can produce a fair amount of value. So I'm primarily going to be managing the stand for the further growth of these two species. But that doesn't mean I should entirely ignore the tolerant hardwood, because the condition of the stand does provide a unique opportunity. So while most of the tolerant hardwood here is poor quality, there are some individuals, especially in the sugar maple, that have some promise and they're not that bad. And when you're thinning out species that are sold on the basis of quality, sometimes it's good to have this dense condition. So when we're working with softwood, Softwood trees grow fairly uniform, and they're sold on the basis of volume more than quality, because they're usually used for structural lumber. Likewise with the aspen here, it's just ground up and made into oriented strand board, so the quality of the wood doesn't really matter too much. In these cases, they, we absolutely want to optimize growth, which means optimizing the crown ratio. Thinning out the stand before its crown starts to recede means that the trees can have more foliar area to respond to a thinning and be less encumbered by its neighbors. But when we're managing certain hardwoods, we're not optimizing for growth, we're actually optimizing for quality. Because a quality hardwood log can sell for literally 10 times as much as a low quality hardwood log. We need to kind of transition our thought process from thinking about cords per acre per year to more you know, dollars per acre per year. And when you're trying to grow quality hardwood, this is kind of the stand you want to see. When hardwood trees grow up and the crown starts to recede, they leave behind dead branches. Eventually these dead branches will prune off and the wood will grow over it, but if this happens at too late of a stage and the tree is already fully grown once, this, once the branches break off, then a good percent of the volume of that log is gonna have a knot in it, and that's poor quality wood. If, however, that hardwood tree is grown in a dense environment and those branches can prune off when the stem is still young, it has plenty of room to grow over those knot scars. So when the tree reaches maturity, it's gonna have far less knots and far more volume of clean, high value wood. So when we're determining the time to thin a softwood stand, really we wanna start thinning before the growth slows down. With a hardwood stand, we really wanna make sure that it's grown dense enough first to have at least, yeah, we'll say 20 feet of a clean stem. So while we may have suboptimal conditions for the aspen and fir here, we have pretty good conditions for the individual sugar maples that are pretty good quality. So with that in mind, let's determine a treatment. Now, as you've probably guessed, I would like to do a thinning in here. Specifically, I'd like to do a free thinning, which is when you take from all size classes. I want to come in here and really target the poor quality stems and the ash. Now, that plan comes with a little bit of a problem because this stand is essentially submerchantable. If I were to sell it as normal pulp wood, it probably wouldn't meet the minimum specifications. There's a lot of stems that are only three or four inches in diameter. But luckily, I have kind of a unique opportunity with my location. There's a lot of camps and summer homes around here, and there's a lot of people who sell bundles of firewood on the side of the road. Even though the stems aren't even ideal for usual firewood use, it might be well suited for these markets. And because I'm not really cutting that much, it's a small stand and I'm only removing at most 30% of the standing volume, I can probably find a market for this amount of wood. But I'll have plenty of time for that because I likely won't be able to treat this stand this year. It probably won't happen until next spring or summer. But once it's done, there will be more room in the crown for these trees to grow, and it'll probably be 10 years before I come in again and harvest some of the aspen and most of the fir. There also might be some areas where I do a little bit of pre-commercial thinning and just kind of come in with a chainsaw and space it out a little bit and leave whatever I cut on the ground. Well, that's all for now, guys. Next time we're gonna be taking a look at the stand that we're actually going to be harvesting this fall, so stay tuned for that. And if you like this, please like and subscribe. There's a lot more coming your way. So until next time, later.